I wouldn't say I would I wouldn't agree with your characterization of the situation as a civil war. I think that uh, definitely there is a military confrontation, but uh, uh, and uh, we had in 2006 when we had issued our uh, human rights report on the Sarvajudu, we had titled it when a state wages war on its own people. But uh, at the same time, uh, I do not agree with your characterization of it as a civil war. Uh, firstly, I think that there is a large element of structural violence in the situation there. And uh, structural violence uh, from the point of view of uh, the nutritional status of the people, uh, which is, uh, according to government statistics, it's uh, the 37 percent of the total population of India, the adult population, has a body mass index of below 18.5, which shows chronic undernutrition. If we disaggregate this data, then 50 percent of the scheduled tribes, 60 percent of the scheduled castes, a large section of the minorities, according to the Sacha Committee report, uh, have. Uh, serious problems of chronic undernutrition. These communities are unable to survive because of their access to common property resources uh, like land, water, forest. Now in this, uh, in, in the, what is happening is that the state, state has, is asserting its, the, uh, on the basis of the doctrine of eminent domain the state is basically asserting its right over all the resources in these areas and in order to do so they are pushing these people off the land off their access to these common property resources and uh, this uh, has severe uh, ma major connotations uh, in the sense that uh, the state is standing character to a process in which uh, these resources are being expropriated from the from the hold of the communities that are using them and these resources are then being uh, provided to private interests and this is the first time in the history of our country in which this is being this ex process of expropriation and handing over to private interests is being characterized as a legitimate procedure to ensure uh, ensure the development of the economy. So this is a major problem, uh, and this process of expropriation. It is uh, done under the guarantee of the state. Uh, by peaceful means, uh, if possible, but where that is not possible, then the state is quite willing to use military intervention, as they have shown in the operation of, uh, in, in the course of the operation uh, Green Hunt. But at the same time, uh, I would not agree with this characterization as a civil war and I am still looking for a way in which citizens can work for um, an order based on uh, peace, justice and uh, equity. Equity is a major, inequity is a major factor in this situation. We are, we are seeing, we are watching with alarm and uh, dread a situation in which uh, sections of the population are becoming extremely rich while other sections of the population are becoming poorer. The Gini coefficient is increasing in this country. Utsa Patnaik says that the, that the per capita grain consumption is declining uh, among uh, population that is already malnourished and whose malnutrition also makes them vulnerable to infectious diseases like malaria and tuberculosis as well as to a host of other 
chronic medical problems. So this is a this is a bad situation that we are confronted with. I would like to draw the attention of uh, my of those who can who are listening to the fact that under the provisions of the Commission for the Prevention of Genocide, UN Commission for the Prevention of Genocide, Convention for the Prevention of Genocide, I'm sorry. It's not only the act of killing people that is regarded as genocide, also the creation of conditions which would uh, lead to uh, a situation in which survival would become difficult that would also be characterized as a form of genocide under this uh, convention. And uh, so I would really draw the attention of my hearers, of the viewers, to the possibility of this situation being characterized as a genocidal one. Oh, we know that presence in India can be quite Kafkaesque in nature. Yes. We have had a history, especially in the last decade, of many innocent people being jailed for crimes they have not committed. Yes. And uh, you spent nearly two years, yes. over two years in fact. Two years, four months. Two years, four months. Yes. For, uh, for, and under the charges of sedition. Yes. What kind of, what kind of uh, 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 conditions prevail in these jails? The conditions in the jail are well known. I don't want to, uh, sp uh, you know, to spend time on that. But I would just like to say that uh, just as the Supreme Court, in dealing with my bail petition, they said that the crime of sedition is not made out, that the case for sedition is not made out in my case. But on the other hand, the district, uh, the, in the trial court, I was convicted of sedition and uh, uh, given a punishment of life sentence. And this was maintained by the High Court, uh, uh, or rather not maintained by the High Court, but the High Court, in the process of refusing me bail, they uh, gave a long argument which supported the, uh, the charge of, uh, the charge, the conviction under uh, 124A of sedition and uh, also uh, the other charges against me under Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. And uh, uh, the Chhattisgarh Public Security Act. Now, there is, a, uh, there is actually a lack of understanding or rather a cleavage in the two types of understanding of the of this issue of sedition. And uh, Mr. Virapamwali, our law minister, when I came, after hearing the Supreme Court judgment, he, he himself stated on, in a television interview that he would be pressing for a review of the legal provisions of 124A in the Law Commission. Uh, but I would like to point out as with all the strength at my disposal that there are hundreds of people who are who have been charged with uh, sedition who have uh, who are either serving time in prison either as under trial or as convicts after conviction of, of under sedition uh, and uh, that if the uh, if the legal provisions of sedition as we hold them to be are undemocratic in the extreme, are in the process, uh, in, in fact, destructive of democracy, then this, uh, this um, situation in which large numbers of people are actually uh, being held in jail under a law which is either falsely stated or falsely uh, interpreted. Uh, it's a disgraceful reality in that we have to face in our country, and that the sooner this is uh, this is uh, remedied, the better it will be for our uh, our uh, self-image, 
as a democratic nation. Uh, the PUCL had met for the last two days to consider the issue of sedition and similar laws which compromise our liberty. And we have agreed that we will all work together with a number of other, other uh, human rights organizations uh, that we will work for uh, the repeal of 124A. And uh, we will uh, carry out a signature campaign across the nation. Of to get at least 10 million, uh, 10 lakh million signatures, uh, calling for repeal of 124A and other similar laws, uh, and uh, we will go and uh, this, sig uh, this signatures, the signed appeal with more than a million signatures, we will submit it to Parliament uh, at some time in the near future. This is something that we hope to do. We will also, we have also decided to oppose the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, which again we hold to be destructive of democracy. And uh, so this is the situation. This is the, these are the plans for, that we have made to oppose these draconian laws and restore democracy to our nation. In the meantime, uh, the confrontation in the central in India goes on apace, and we will we will all do our best to work for justice, peace, and.